it sounds like this is one of these challenging real world cases that we're starting to see more with clinical trials. Patients who actually haven't received chemotherapy. So now he has neuropathy as well though from the infortumab. So I, I guess I'll ask you, Tian, any thoughts as to what you would do for this patient? Yeah, I think this is a really challenging case, and as you say, um, a real-world case where we're faced with in clinic and as they're progressing on multiple lines of active therapies um, in urothelial cancer. Um, probably in the um, situations um, I would think about um, other chemotherapy options. Um, so could a dose reduced um, dose of Taxil make sense for this patient or even benflunine? Um, could we give him some single agent gemcitabine, for example, um, since he does have the chronic renal insufficiency um, and, and you know, control disease? Um, and then, you know, I would also try to work a little bit more on his neuropathy, you know, is there anything that we can do to make that better um, before we started more um, uh, neurotoxic agents. Um, but, you know, very challenging and often in these cases I'm going to our phase one clinical trials office and saying, mm -hmm. what do we have open mm -hmm. this week, right, and uh, really trying to look for trial options for these patients. Would you ever add in carboplatin for a patient like this to your gemcitabine? You know, I, I think uh, depending on what his renal function is, what his uh, estimated and you know real 24-hour uh, um, uh, creatinine clearance is, um, you know, I think it's certainly an option um, to retry. I've had um, some refractory patients in my practice who have had some disease stability with, you know, rechallenge of, of chemotherapy options, even um, in the fifth, sixth line uh, with docetaxel. Um, and so I, I think there's still a, a, a space for that in the refractory chemo, um, but it's hard to select the right patients um, who will tolerate it. How about you, Betsy? What, this was your case. What yeah. did you do? <laughs> um, so I think of gemcitabine as a very active agent in bladder cancer. Um, we are using less of it, I think, especially at centers that use docent zumbac as the first line cisplatin containing regimen when there are multiple subsequent options like the PDL1 and PD1 inhibitors and others that we've just talked about. Um, but this patient hasn't seen it yet, and so um, I think that's something that's worth trying with the caveat that, you know, unlike his great response to pembrolizumab, mm -hmm. um, you know, if we get a response, we aren't necessarily going to be able to continue treatment indefinitely due to toxicity. Your question about carboplatin is a really good one because generally gemcitabine is given with carboplatin and that's where it sort of sits in the guidelines. Um, in this particular patient with comorbidities and advanced age, I tend to do a layered approach where I try one and see how they do and then add another um, if I need it. But again, that's not evidence-based. I wonder if any of you would consider the same. But Well, I, one option that we've used at MD Anderson is gemcitabine with doxorubicin. Now, I don't think that would be a great option for a patient with congestive heart failure, so I'm going to assume he has a cardiomyopathy. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did publish some data with a triplet of gemcitabine taxol doxorubicin in the frontline setting, which had a resp response rate of around 40, per, I think it was 40 to 50 percent frontline cisplatin ineligible using the typical Cockroft Galt less than 60. Now, again, he has neuropathy as well, so I always feel a little nervous or concerned giving taxanes. We, we've actually used a little bit of the gemcitabine venflunine that was published for lung cancer back in the day. I don't know if they use it much anymore, but venflunine has less neuropathy potential compared to other agents. So for a case like this, I might you know, if I can get insurance to approve it, maybe I would consider gemcitabine flun than flunine. Although I, I might start at a lower dose just to make sure he can handle it since he sounds that, that he's a bit frail.